today we are going to see an algebraic system and an algebraic structure. An algebraic system consists of a set with an operation on the set and the accompanying properties. So these operations could be a unary operation, binary operation or n array operations. And these accompanying properties could be commutative, associative, closure, identity, inverse, all those things. So, so examples for the algebraic systems are semi-group, monoid, group, Boolean algebra and the rings. So we have seen that group is an algebraic system which satisfies closure, associative, identity and inverse properties. Coming to the algebraic structure. So algebraic structure is an algebraic system. The set A with the F1, F2 which are the operations and R1, R2 which are the relations. So an algebraic system A, F1, F2 f to fn and r1 r2 some rn where in addition to the proper the operations f y the relations r i are defined on the set a next we will see what is homomorphism and isomorphism suppose x comma dot and y comma star that is x is a set and dot is an operation and y is a set and star is an operation on this elements of y be two algebraic system where dot and star are n array operations then a function f from x to y is a homomorphism from x dot to y star if for any x x1 comma x2 belongs to x we have f of x1 dot x2 is equal to f of x1 star f of x2 which means that if you take any two elements from the first set and uh, if you define the function f of x1 dot x2 this dot is nothing but the operation on uh, this x comma dot if it is equal to the f of x1 that is the f applied on the ele individual elements with the operation the second y comma star then the homomorph this is called as a homomorphism from x dot to y star and this homomorphism is called epimorphism if this function f is on to that is injective and it is called monomorphism if f is what to one that is subjective and it is called isomorphism if f is one to one and on to that is bijective so when x comma dot and y comma star are isomorphic then the two algebraic systems will be structurally indistinguishable which means that they are similar you cannot distinguish these two uh, algebraic systems next is semi groups and monoids we have seen groups and now we'll see what are the semi groups and monoids semi group is an algebraic structure which satisfies the closure and associative properties if uh, only the closure and associative properties are satisfied on a set then it is called as a semi group and your monoid is a semi group with an identity that is it's an algebraic structure which satisfies closure associative and identity properties example note here in composition table of monoid no two rows or columns will be the same and examples suppose we see z plus that is a set of positive integers with an operation of addition is a semi group but it is not monoid because it is semi group because it satisfies closure and associative but it is not monoid since it satisfies the closure and associative but the identity element 0 does not belongs to z plus next is uh, n comma plus that is natural numbers with the addition operation is commutative monoid with e equal to 0 where your natural numbers n equal to 0 to n because it satisfies closure associative and the identity elements belongs to the natural numbers n next is a matrix of order n cross n on the set of integers and the plus is a commutative monoid because it satisfies the closure because if you add two matrices of order n cross n you will get the again the matrix of uh, n cross n and it uh, satisfies the associative and it has an identity matrix with all the elements of the matrix as zero so it is a commutative monoid or an abelian monoid next mn of q because it's uh, here 
the elements are rational numbers and the real numbers both are commutative monoids with the operation addition let next is sub semi groups and sub monoids we have seen uh, semi group and monoid now will extend this to sub semi group and sub monoids let s comma star be a semi group so here s comma star is a semi group means it satisfies closure and associative and suppose you take a subset t of s and then t star is a sub semi group of s comma star if t is closed under star which means that if you pick some subset t from s and this t the elements of t if you satisfies the closure on this star then it is called as a sub semi group example suppose uh, the semi group is n plus then for this n plus if you take uh, z plus the n plus means it's a natural numbers and sub uh, z plus is a integers of uh, positive integers plus is a sub semi group since z plus is a subset of n and z plus is closed under plus second example t plus where t is a set of odd integers it is not a sub semi group of n plus since uh, t is a subset of n but t is not closed under plus so why because t is not closed under plus here is if you add two odd integers you will not be getting an odd integer so you'll be getting even integer so your t is not closed under plus similarly m star and e where e is an identity element with respect to the operation star is a monoid and t is a subset of m then t star is a sub monoid of m star e if t is closed under star this is the same thing but along with that e belongs to t this is a definition for sub monoid example for the monoid r dot and 1 that is nothing but set of real numbers with the multiplication operation with the identity element 1 n dot 1 is a sub monoid since n is a subset of r and n is a n is closed under the operation dot and 1 belongs to n second example e command dot is not sub monoid of uh, just a minute second example e dot 1 is not sub monoid of r dot 1 where e is a set of even integers since uh, 1 does not belongs to e it satisfies closure but it does not uh, contain the identity element next is suppose a is equal to 3 plus where uh, this 3 plus represents multiples of 3 or uh, sum of uh, sum of 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus uh, like that it is nothing but sums of 3 then a plus is a sub semi group of z plus since a is a subset of z as well as uh, it is a sub semi group of z plus but not sub monoid since e is equal to 1 does not belongs to a because your identity element must belongs to the set a but here it does not belong so it is a it is not sub monoid also a plus is a cyclic group we have seen what is cyclic group uh, which is generated by 3 next is homomorphism and isomorphism of sub semi group and monoid so see, we have seen the semi group and uh, monoid and we have also seen the homomorphism and isomorphism so when your homomorphism and isomorphisms are applied on a semi group and monoid so these are called homomorphism and isomorphisms of semi groups and monoid so coming to the definition let s comma star and t comma delta be two semi groups a function f from s to t is called a semi group homomorphism from s star to t delta if for any two elements x1 x2 belongs to the s 
we have f of x1 star x2 is equal to f of x1 delta f of x2. That means if x1 and x2 are the elements of S and uh, if you apply the f uh, on x1 star x2 that is the star is nothing but the operation on S. If it is equal to applying f of uh, individual elements with the operation on the second that is t comma delta. So then we call it as a semi group homomorphism. Similarly, if m star and em and t delta et are the two monoids and a function f from m to t is called monoid homomorphism from this to this, if for any two elements uh, x1, x2 belongs to m, we have f of x1 star f of, f of x1 star x2 is equal to f of x1 delta f of x2, this is the same as this and along with that f of em is should be equal to et that is if you apply the f function on this identity element of the first uh, m first set m which should be generating the identity element of this t example suppose z plus and plus z plus plus z plus dot are the semi group which we have already seen that it they satisfies the uh, closure and uh, associative now, if you define f from z plus to z plus as f of m is equal to 2 power m, where m belongs to z plus, then f is a semi-group homomorphism of z plus plus into z plus dot. Since that is nothing but if you take any two elements from z plus and apply the operation, so that is f of m plus n. If it is uh, f i, uh, I am applying that f of m plus n is nothing but 2 power m plus n. And this 2 power m plus n, I can write it as 2 power m into 2 power n. So, we know that 2 power m is nothing but f of m and 2 power n is nothing but f of n. So, we have a mapping from uh, m plus n to f of m plus n to f of m into f of n. Second example, n plus 0 and n dot 1 are monoids and if we define the function f from n to n as f of m equals to the power m where m belongs to capital N then f is a monoid homomorphism of n plus into n dot since mn belongs to the set n and f of mn is equal to 3 to the power of m plus n which is nothing but 3 power m into 3 power n, which is nothing but f of m into f of n. Along with that, f of 0 is nothing but 3 power 0, which is nothing but 1. That is the identity element of this first. If you apply the function, you will be getting the identity element of the second. Thank you.